what can be done here? Because there is now it's it's right or wrong. It's now a narrative that fans are repeating, and uh, you know, there's no doubt in my mind. Coaches think that it's it's off, and they're more and more uh, vocal about it. Certainly, when it comes to pass interference, what can be done to get these things more right than certainly they have been through the first six weeks of the season? Well, I'd say first thing the league needs not to overreact by one for one play that happens in the championship game. I mean, I think it's bizarre that, you know, you go to making pass interference reviewable um, all throughout the game. And then second, if you want a quick fix, and you could fix this at the meeting today in Florida if you wanted to, this whole notion of egregious and, and clear and obvious, what they're doing is, and it's not acceptable for a coach, coach challenges that it's defensive pass interference, say Pat Shermer in, uh, in New England the other day near the end of the game on a pass to Golden Tate, he challenges that it's interference. It's interference. Everybody knows it's interference, but replay applies a different standard than the officials because it's not clear and obvious and egregious. They're comparing all plays to what happened in that championship game um, in in New Orleans, and that's what has everybody screwed up here. and And they could they could really change this and make it a lot easier and a lot clearer instead of going to this big subjective. It has to be beyond what the officials look at on the field in terms of their standard and just say in replay, it is or isn't, period, then there would be sensible decisions made and good challenges made by coaches who now don't even trust throwing their challenge flag. And I get it. They're frustrated. Everybody on social media is frustrated. Um, You know, the owners are frustrated. I'm sick of it, quite frankly. Because it just, it's just, it just kind of having two standards for one play is just not right. And so if they want to change it and they want to leave that meeting and they want to say, okay, forget this clear and obvious stuff. When you look at it, Al, it either is or isn't, then things will make a lot more sense to everybody. Because I just tell you, I'm just telling you, if it's week 17 and you got a game where the winner moves into the playoffs, and you have something like the Golden Tate situation where the league says in replay, yeah, it is, but it's not big enough. I mean, it's going to be hell to pay. Well, it'll be, so it'll be, I'm it'll, not going to be, I'm not going to be horribly surprised if they change it. Well, the question is Mike Prairie here on the Rich Eisen show, if it's already been changed, because that's what I'm hearing from coaches that they believe sometime around week two, week three, that the emphasis or the the rule uh, verbiage has changed because the Golden Tate play, to me, looks exactly like some of the plays that Al Riveron showed to the NFL Network Media Group and the rest of all the on-air and production staffs as he went through the summer. It looks exactly like something that would have put a flag down on the field for pass interference. And now the standard appears to be even more strict. Do you think something's changed midseason here, Mike? No, I don't think so. I mean, I look at every play. I mean, I, I saw Bruce Aaron's challenge for a defensive pass interference, and maybe you're right. I don't know. He challenged in a game against the Giants. Pass, defensive pass interference wasn't called, and then they reviewed it, changed it, and put pass interference on it. I mean, it was. It was. They, they grabbed the receiver's arm, and he couldn't get it all the way up, so they put it on. That's and and it it was. That was pass interference. Um, then they went to Green Bay and Philadelphia, and uh, Matt Lafleur challenged the play, saying that uh, Philadelphia had interfered. My God, it's interference! It's interference! It's interference. All day long, the defender's not playing the ball, keeps the left arm from getting to the ball to try to make a play. Challenge it, no change. Later on in the game, the Peterson challenges, it's interference and they don't change. There's, the, the thing is, it almost seems to me like they, went, they were trying to get consistent to find some consistency, and then it's maybe just Al or whatever um, that said, well, the best way to be consistent is not to overturn a period. Um, uh, but I just think it, it's, it's, you know, it's hard for anybody, Al Riveron, who I feel bad for, has been put in a difficult place to find this standard that is so, um, you know, so kind of way out there. I mean, you don't know. There's no guideline to it, really, no consistent guideline to it. And I just, 
it, it's, you know, I think they set the rule up to fail. Maybe that's it. Remember, it's only a one-year rule. It's going to take 24 votes to get it back in next year, and I don't think they'll get it. I'd almost bet my bottom dollar, which is about all I have left, um, you know, that it doesn't make it back in at least under the form that it's in right now. Put some sort of word picture to what Al Riveron's going through with owners around him today. I mean, do they say something to them? Do they do they vocally say something to him? Sit him down? Well, I'm not so sure that he's going to face the owners. I mean, he okay. will face likely be facing the competition committee. You know, who will talk about that? And I think they'll talk about changes in and the approach. Look, this is not new, right? I mean, last year in week two, after yeah. every defensive player, including Clay Matthews, was falling down on quarterbacks, uh, and they were getting called for roughing the passer, conference call changed, that basically went away. And then this year, you know, you had in the first three weeks, you had like massive numbers of holding calls because of the point of emphasis that wanted the officials to look at backside holding and call backside holding. Well, they they start calling it backside, frontside, in the middle. And then they had a conference call, and now in the last three weeks, we're at a pace that's less than uh, holding calls that are less than last year. So they're probably talking about where they, if they could make this change, because um, I don't think there's anybody that's happy about it. I don't think there's anybody that's happy about it. And I, I, I would look forward, but it's again, it's my thing. I would look forward to that competition committee and to look at the competition committee and saying this doesn't work. I would say that as the head of officiating, this is not working. Uh, my guys don't like it on the field. Nobody likes it. We've got to make a change. Will they drop it? I don't believe so, but they may tighten it up as to what is or what is not interference. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.